The Promise Neverland is one of the most suspense building, anxiety inducing, heart attack rendering shows that has been produced for anime in modern years. And I wish I'd never read it so I could experience all that too. Before we begin, I think it's important for me to clarify that I have a pretty mixed relationship when it comes to manga. Now, it's not that I don't like it, in fact that couldn't be further from the truth, I'm just extraordinarily selective. Those that I do read have either been heavily recommended to me, or I was in love with the anime and needed to continue its story. At least, that's how it used to be. But in the last year, all this changed, down to one opportunity and one manga. This week we read Promise Neverland, chapters 1 through 36, and it was a wild ride. The Promise Neverland made me fall back in love with the medium I had fallen away from, and so my adoration for this series goes beyond its subject and transcends into how it's affected my personal life. So as I'm almost always an anime only, I was nervous but excited by the adaption for The Promised Neverland, as I had never felt the burden of having your favourite manga ruined in animation. And little did I know that reading the source material would affect my enjoyment of this anime as much as it did. And little did I know that I had expectations this reality couldn't meet. And that, for lack of a better word, sucks. Because week in week out, I don't feel the same way about this show as the majority of anime onlys do, and for a while I've been searching for the answer as to why. And it all comes back to the manga, and my inability to separate what I'm reading from what I'm seeing. And I knew from the opening 10 seconds I was in for a visual disappointment. Well, there are plenty of places where I could and will praise the animation team. Background design. <laughs> it's not one of them. The appeal of The Promised Neverland doesn't just lie in its narrative direction, but also in its gorgeous illustrations. And Pozuka Demizu makes every environment come alive in the way that it's designed to. Whether it's the ominous fear and curiosity brought on by the gate, Connie. or the hustle and bustle in the house, Whereas, in comparison, the anime's backgrounds feel, well, to use a Scottish phrase, dour. Even the truck that Emma and Norman hide under lacks any character, and so in lies the crux. The environment of the promised Neverland is as much a character as the people that live within it, and so the anime does both the manga and itself a huge disservice by not focusing on it. Where is the detail in Mama's room? Where is the fear at the Demon Council? With such lack of attention to the small things, I end up looking at the anime as a missed opportunity. The people should, would and could be horrified by its story, but they would feel it so much more if care was crafted into the world's surroundings. Damn it. And in a way, I also feel the same about its narrative. Time up. <laughs> Pouring through the panels of the manga, I got to know the motivations and internal struggles of our three protagonists and the mind games that they play with Mama, who FYI is missing a new opening half much more than she should be. Anyway, it's between the pages that we get to see what an utter mess Norman is as he lives with the sole desire to protect not just his family, but really, Emma. And it's that obsessive protection that fuels his every move, so I might not know where his mind will go next, but at least I understand him. He goes from being this cookie cutter genius type to someone with far more depth and far more fear than he shows on the surface. Now it's the same with Ray and Emma but in different ways, yet what I'm reading isn't reflected on screen and I find myself filling in the gaps for missed development and spending a lot of time just… questioning. 
Where are Crohn's attempts to sway Gilda? If you had seen them, then maybe you would have gotten a better idea of why she was singled out in the first place. Why are the internal thoughts of the protagonist being wiped out in the way the first time conversations would have had? It just feels like sex with its more than a sanitary story. The I know, it's silly to question this show as much as I do. And here's a problem with every query and every moment that I spend in doubt. These are my own personal fears. I have no idea what it's like to look at the promised Neverland through the lens of an anime only. And so I question, because I've already seen. This kind of story, with all of its twists and turns and reveals and developments, can only be experienced for the first time, once. And no matter how good this adaption may be, I can't see past what I've already seen, and what I believe was done better. So in the end, Crone's game of tag, Dawn's breakdown and any of the big plot twist revelations were never going to hit me the way they did back when I picked up the manga. And as someone who just about never reads the source material first, I had no idea that this was the way I was going to feel. So I underestimated this whole experience greatly. <laughs> and it means that I'm faced with a reality that my expectations don't meet. But that doesn't make it a bad one. The anime does what the manga cannot. It brings sound and movement to stillness, <laughs> creating these beautiful hidden shots behind objects which amp up the feeling of being watched, as if I'm peering into a private conversation that at any moment could be horribly interrupted. A lot of attention has been paid to that camera work, such as the tracking shots following from the perspective of Emma, or Tick talking back and forth between Norman and Ray all accentuated by sound design that's been weaved in between each of the scenes, a smart decision for a horror where the soundtrack is sparse. You see, all of this elevates the anime from the black and white of the manga, and it's been elevated by a team who are just trying to do their best. So when I say that this adaption doesn't meet my expectations, I feel like I'm dismissing the hard work that the team at Cloverworks Plan. And I often think that we can get so overly critical or overly analytical about another's work and forget that there is someone behind that screen, at that desk, pouring hours upon hours into the thing that we have then gone on to criticise. Now don't get me wrong, I think it is a healthy thing to do this because it can lead to self-improvement and all work should be open to review, but in my case, in a manga reader's case, it's more about how could you miss out this and that and why would you do this when you should have done that, it's you or me in this instance, not being satisfied with the current reality, when in actuality, how would you take this manga form and translate it into an anime? Of course I'm not going to get everything I could possibly wish for, of course it's not going to go at the pace I want, but the key animators, in-betweeners, layout assistants, CG artists, sound mixers, colorists, prop design and characters too, production managers and production committees, music and screenplays and directing departments, all of them are doing their best to bring their best to a series that I and so many others love. That series is The Promised Neverland, and it is one of the most suspense building, anxiety inducing, heart attack rendering shows that has been produced for anime in modern years. <laughs> and I wish I'd never read it, but I'm so happy that I did. Because in writing and editing this video, I've realised that there was merit in both mediums, that the anime is as much an individual as the manga. And most importantly of all, I realised that I am never doing this again. So long live Emma, long live Ray, long live Norman, and long live me and my life as an anime only.
Hello. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've done one of these end of video message type things. So I just wanted to say thank you for watching it if you got to the end. I wanted this video to be a little bit scary, a little bit unsettling and uh, quite intense. So I hope I captured those feelings. It was incredibly time consuming but very enjoyable to put together and I hope that you enjoyed watching it. As it was quite cathartic for me as I am such a huge lover of the manga. And of course, I will do this again. Read manga before the anime that is. Damn that 2 dollars a month Shonen Jump subscription. Anyway, if you like this, hitting that good old like button will help elevate it amongst the hundreds of promised Neverland videos that exist. And sharing it would mean a lot to me. Alright, I'll see you next time. Thank you again. Bye for now.